Neville Goddard was a great mystic from the 20th century, and his teacher, Abdullah, taught him several spiritual laws, including the Law of Assumption. Now, he wrote more than 10 books to explain these teachings, as well as the Law of Assumption that he taught his students. Now, in today's video, we're going to dive into these teachings that Neville shared with his students in his lectures. But before doing that, be sure to hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to be notified every time a new video is uploaded, be sure to hit that bell icon. Now, to get back into this video, we're going to understand precisely what the law of assumption is and how you can leverage it to your advantage to manifest anything and everything you could ever possibly want. Your thoughts are, are a reflection of your subconscious programming. And your subconscious programming shapes the world around you. Neville Goddard states that there is nothing beyond your imagination. Your imagination is your subconscious mind. And only things that exist in the world can be imagined. If you can't envision something, then it doesn't exist in the first place. Your actions, your thoughts, your words, the decisions you make, even the things that you feel are heavily impacted by your subconscious programming or your imagination. So whenever you imagine something to be yours, it will become yours so long as you fully embody that state of being. And you don't have to effort or force creation or force anything in order for it to happen. Because in that state of being, it is already yours. Fully embody an assumption. The world around you will rearrange itself to conform to that assumption. Neville Goddard held this view that assumptions will solidify themselves into facts externally so long as you continue to assume that these assumptions are already true and persist in them every single day. Now, this will take some time, but you will manifest all of your desires in the long run if you just assume that they are yours. Now, it's not always easy to do, th do this, of course, because the source of your beliefs is your subconscious programming. And in order to shift your imagination to embody what you want, you must change your subconscious programming. Now, it's crucial to ex for your mind to accept that your assumptions are true. Initially, it will refuse to accept them, but eventually it will accept them. Now, according to Neville's teaching, the sensation of having or being what you desire to have will eventually appear in your physical world. An assumption has to become fact when you hold on to it long enough for it to become your main thought and emotion. Now, consciousness is the only thing that exists in this reality. According to Goddard, consciousness is the cause as well as the substance of this entire world. Therefore, it is to consciousness that we must turn if we want to discover the secret of creation. Just as your imagination is the place where you live, your consciousness is the thing that determines what your thoughts will be. This means that your consciousness is the place that where you live. Now, consciousness has a greater impact on our lives, and we think and live according to what we are conscious of. In other words, we think and we live according to what we are programmed to do subconsciously. So for example, let's say one of your best friends passed away. If you are conscious of this, you'll be sad. However, if you are unconscious of this, you are not aware of this, and you don't know that he has passed away, you will not feel sad, and you will continue to live your life normally. Only those things exist in the universe that we are conscious of. If you aren't conscious of something, it doesn't actually exist. Now. As you are aware, we have senses that allow us to become conscious, to perceive these things. Our eyes allow us to become aware of the size, color, and shape of something. And our ears allow us to become aware of the sounds around us. Therefore, if something or someone doesn't have any senses, it doesn't exist because it has no influence in the universe and no reality of its own. It cannot be perceived without the senses. Neville believed that if we strongly believe our assumptions to be true, 
then they will quickly harden into facts. But if we have any doubts, we will not be able to manifest our desires. It's what he says, the feeling is the one and only medium through which ideas are conveyed to the subconscious. Therefore, a man who does not control his feelings may easily impress the subconscious with undesirable states, the thoughts that reside in your subconscious. People even wrote a book with this title called The Feeling is the Secret. Now the law of assumptions suggests that everything can be ma manifested with assumptions. But assumptions should be felt to be true and real. Assumptions are not thought. Assumptions are felt. This is why Neville Goddard says that feeling is the secret. Assumptions alone will have no effect until you combine them with the feelings and emotions of experiencing your desire. The combined effect of emotions and feelings will help you attract your desires into your life more effectively if you'd like to do so. Now, according to Neville Goddard, you are the only God and you are everything. In other words, you are an extension of source consciousness. There is no other cosmos other than you and everything else in the universe is an illusion since you are an extension of source, the one who is responsible for the existence of everything. Now, if something happens, but you aren't conscious of it, it didn't happen. It's kind of like if a tree falls and no one else is around to hear it, did it actually happen? So if you are conscious of something, it still depends upon what your perspective is about that particular thing, event, or experience. Your consciousness is responsible for the existence of everything. You are an extension of source consciousness. Now, let's say there's a person who is a good person for you because he helped you. But for someone else, he's a bad person because he has done something wrong to them. According to Neville Goddard, there is nothing good or bad. It depends on us. It depends upon our perceptions. What is good for us can be bad for others. Therefore, we are the only ones who can define things. We are the only ones who decide what will happen and how we will perceive it. People behave differently. They will behave differently. Your thoughts are formed by everything you have experienced, including the people you have met, what you have seen, and what you have done. Your disposition and your frame of mind, which means that everything exists in the universe, is connected to other things and that nothing is pointless. Now, one of the most important points that Neville makes is he says that there is no one to change except oneself because your imagination is the one and only reality and your perception determines everything. Therefore, if you want to change something, you must change yourself. Now, if you can alter the way that you think, the world around you will change as a result. Here's another famous quote. There's no one to change but oneself. That self is just your consciousness. Your notion of yourself is what shapes both your consciousness and the universe in which it exists. Because our consciousness is the sole reality, we have no choice but to look at it as the ultimate authority of what constitutes the world around us. And that is not just your conscious mind, but it is your deep subconscious mind. The way in which other people express themselves is also relying on us. Since although we are the origin of everything else and all that we experience, we are also the origin of everything, everyone else. Rebirth is dependent upon the inner work that you do within yourself. No one can be reborn without first changing their current self. Whenever an entirely new set of reactions inserts, enters a person's life, a change of consciousness has taken place and a spiritual rebirth has taken place. Your world's happenings and people are a direct reflection of you. Therefore, you must start with shifting your own concept of yourself if you want to create a different reality in the people in your life. Another important teaching of Neville is that you 
are the operant power. You have the potential to alter the way that you perceive things. Given that we are the origin of everything and that our consciousness is the only reality, and that given we are do the dominant power, things appear to us according to our own presumptions and imaginations. This is another one of Neville's divine teachings that has the potential to alter the way that you are the only creator. Everything is under your perception and nothing can take place unless you've actually impressed your subconscious mind with it. The way that others show up in your life is decided by your own imagination, by your subconscious programming, which indicates you are the only creator. He told you that you must have the courage to assume that you are already what you want to be and that you must be true and persist in that assumption. If you are not faithful, it will not come to pass. And if you don't assume it, it will never come to pass for you are the operant power. Neville talks about living in the end, living your life as if your desires have already been fulfilled. Now, if you currently desire something, it indicates that you are conscious of needing that thing and that you are currently living in a state of needing your wish in which you are aware that you lack your desire. However, if you shift your state and you start living in the end of your state of the wish fulfilled, which means feeling the experience of having your desire, it will come true. Now, here's a quote from Neville that explains this philosophy. Persist in the feeling of the wish being fulfilled, and it will come true. If you want something, Neville says that you must live in the state of having this desire, and the world around you will rearrange it into facts. So if you begin to assume that you already have what you desire, you will have it in your reality. Now, one of the final teachings of Neville is being able to change the past in what is called revision. According to Neville, time is an illusion. Your past was the result of your beliefs at the time. Now, if you are experiencing difficult things in your life, it's because you need to change the way that you think. If you can create the situations that caused those experiences, then you will be able to experience great things time and time again. Revision is truly the key that can be used to unlock the doors that have kept you trapped in a particular state to be transformed by the renewing of your mind because as Neville taught, our past extends into our future. Changing your past will not just impact the future that is connected to it. Some individuals have even said that you can change the past itself. You are aware as your past as a result of the things that have happened to you in the past. For example, if you were bullied as a child, you can go back and revise those scenes in a way that you feel like it almost never happened. That it was anything but a bad dream. Now, I hope you found this video helpful in your manifesting journey. Please be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below with your biggest takeaway. Also, please be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified every time a new video is uploaded so you can start accelerating your manifesting.